Hey everyone and welcome back to Breaking Down Nursing, MedMath Edition. Today we're going to learn about dimensional analysis, which is one of the fastest and most reliable ways to calculate medication dosages in nursing. Dimensional analysis helps you keep track of your units and prevent dangerous medication errors. If you're looking for a detailed breakdown of how to do conversions step by step, like moving between milligrams, grams, micrograms, or converting between hours to minutes, be sure to check out my other video where I walk you through all those conversions in detail. This way, you'll have both the conversion skills and the dimensional analysis method working together. So let's dive in. Let's start with our first problem. A patient requires 500 milligrams of medication and the available vial contains 250 milligrams in ml. How many milliliters should you administer? As questions become more complicated and as you move farther along in your nursing degree, they can have numerous words and even add in information that's not necessary for the question at hand. So one of the ways to do it is start with the easy questions and build a habit to pull out the information. And one of the ways I like to do this is underlying the important key terms, including what you're solving for. That way you're focused on what you need. For this question in particular, we're gonna underline 500 milligrams, 250 milligrams per ml, and then what we're looking for is how many milliliters. We're gonna write out how many mLs because at the end of the day, we wanna focus on that's what we wanna end up with at the end of our problem. How many mLs are we going to administer? To keep this straight so we don't get confused and end up with milligrams or per mLs or just milligrams instead of just having mLs of what we're looking for, we're gonna write it out to the side and put a question mark by it so that keeps us on track as to what we're looking for. We're gonna put our mLs on top. So what number contains mLs? So remember, if two numbers are together, like 250 milligrams per mL, we can't separate those numbers. But we can flip them on top of each other. So instead of 250 mil milligrams per mL, we'll do one mL is 250 milligrams. This way we keep mLs on top. So our next step is then figuring out what we need to get rid of. As we're looking at the question, we'll go back to the units we pulled out of what we're looking for, which is mLs. So we need to get rid of milligrams. And how can we do this? Well, we have 500 milligrams was what the patient requires. So for dimensional analysis, if you want to cancel out units of measure, you have to put them on the opposite sides of the equation. Meaning, if we're gonna put milligrams around the bottom, then when we put the multiplication, the milligrams will have to be on top for them to cancel each other out. So we'll put 500 milligrams on top and then we'll cancel out our milligrams, which is what we're looking for. So after we do our calculation, our final answer is gonna be two mLs. Okay, so let's do it again. This time a little bit more complicated. So this question, a patient needs continuous IV infusion of 0.5 milligrams per minute. The medication is available at 200 milligrams and 100 mLs. What is the IV infusion rate in mLs per hour? Just like last time, we're gonna do the same process. So we're gonna underline all the keywords that we believe we may need for the question to solve. So we'll underline 0.5 milligrams per minute, 200 milligrams and 100 mLs. And then what are, we're looking for is mLs per hour, which will also need to be underlined. So in this question, we're searching for mLs per hour. So just like last time, we'll put that first with a question mark, and then we'll start our equation. Well, what do we have that's mLs first? Cause we want to put that in the top. That way we come out to mLs and then we can get our hours later. Well, we have 100 mLs and 200 milligrams. So we'll write that out first. Then we'd like to get rid of our milligrams because we like our mLs at the top. To get rid of our milligrams, we're gonna find out what other number inside of the question has milligrams in it. Well, we have in the question itself, 0.5 milligrams a minute. And as the milligrams are on the bottom with that 200 milligrams, we'll have to write the milligrams on top next to it so that they cancel each other out. 
So we'll put 0 0.5 milligrams over one minute. And again, canceling out our milligrams, so we're left right now with mLs per minute. But that's not what we're looking for, because remember, we're looking for mLs per hour. So now we know we have our mLs, but we need to convert our minutes to hours. And how do we do that? We know that on the bottom for minutes, we need to put minutes on the top next to it to be able to cancel those out. And if we're converting from minutes to hours, then we're gonna have to put hours on the bottom. So, which number's bigger, hour or minutes? We know that there's 60 minutes in one hour, so we can fill those in. We'll cancel out our minutes, and what we are left with is mLs per hour. After we do our calculation, we find that our final answer is 15 mLs per hour. Now, if there's some confusion about how to calculate this out, there's two ways of doing it. There's one way of just calculating the top, so you do 100 times 0 0.5 times 60, and then you calculate the bottom, 200 times 1 times 1, and you would divide the numerator by the denominator, and then you would get your answer of 15 mLs per hour. So let's look at another question. A patient's IV order is for 0.02 milligrams per kilogram per minute, and the patient weighs 60 kilograms. Calculate the IV infusion rate in mics per minute. So just like the previous times, we're gonna go through the same habits. We're gonna underline 0.02 milligrams per kilogram per minute. We're underlying 60 kilograms, and then we're looking for mics per minute. So just like last time to keep us on track, we're gonna put mics per minute question marks. So that way we know when we finish, we need to have mics over milligrams. Otherwise we're not done yet. So what has milligrams that could potentially be micrograms that goes on top? 0 0.02 milligrams. That gives us a starting number. The 0 0.02 milligrams also has kilograms per minute. So we know that we need to get rid of the milligrams and unlike the previous questions before, all of the ones that we've been trying to convert were always in the denominator, but this time it's in the numerator. So we would do the exact same thing we did last time, but we would flip it. Since milligrams are on top, to be able to cancel them out, you'd have to put milligrams on the bottom. And as we're converting to micrograms, we would put micrograms on top. There's a thousand micrograms in one milligram. So right now we know that we have kilograms left and we have to cancel out our kilograms. Well, luckily the patient's weight's in kilo, so we don't need to try to convert pounds to kilograms or anything like that. So since kilograms are on the bottom, kilograms will need to be on the top to be canceled out. We'll place the kilograms on top, which is 60 kilograms, canceling out your kilograms, and you'll only have mics per minute left. After you do your calculations, then your final answer will be 1200 mics per minute. Thank you for watching this Breaking Down Nursing micro learning session on MedMouth calculations. I hope you found it helpful. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and let me know in the comments if there's any topics you'd like me to cover in future videos.